There is no biceps curl that's gonna make you feel more badass than the barbell biceps curl. Two key reasons why. One, this is the curl that's gonna let us lift more weight than any other curl. It's the curl we get to load the heaviest. And two, when you're doing something that Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno came up doing, you just feel strong and you just feel like you're gonna grow your biceps. And you are gonna grow your biceps with the barbell biceps curl, although it is an advanced curl and it is not a curl that everybody needs to do. For the most part, you're gonna be able to grow your biceps just fine if you focus on dumbbell curls and easy bar curls. And that's gonna be a lot easier on your shoulders. It's gonna be a lot easier on your wrists too. So those are your best options if you're more at the start of your training journey. Once you get to a point, however, where we wanna load a little bit more and we wanna focus on an idea called supination and on really lifting heavy, then that's when we come to the barbell curl. So there are a couple benefits that we're gonna get out of the barbell curl that we don't get with dumbbell curls and with the easy bar. And the main one is we get to really focus on creating what's called supination force. So supination is the idea that I'm gonna turn my pinky towards the ceiling as I curl up. And we can do this and we should do this when we do our dumbbell curls. But the position of the barbell, because we have a very, very fixed grip and we can't change our wrist position, we wind up having to create that force throughout. And especially if we grip the bar hard, which is exactly what we should, we're gonna get a really good supination squeeze in addition to the classic elbow flexion that comes with any of our biceps curls and it comes when we're doing any curling motion. Add in the fact again that we have this extra big bar and therefore we can place a lot of weight on the bar and you have a really good recipe to go heavy. You have a really good recipe to take your reps a little bit lower and expose your biceps and to some extent your entire body to a much greater load than you're gonna get when you're doing your dumbbell curls or when you're doing your easy bar curls. The key thing with this though, is we wanna make sure that it stays a biceps curl the entire time. We don't need this to become a power clean. We don't need this to become a really big cheat curl. Instead, we wanna stay strict, especially when we learn it, and that is the key. You're gonna wind up training your biceps with this. You're gonna get a lot of forearm here, and because we're dealing with such a heavy load, your frame, your entire torso, your shoulder blades, your abs, your glutes, are gonna get a little bit of ancillary work through this as well, so it winds up being a great curl. Again, very advanced, but the payoff is really good too. So how do we do the barbell biceps curl? In general, we're still gonna follow our general rules of good curling, which means we wanna squeeze through our shoulder blades, we wanna squeeze through our abs, and we wanna squeeze through our torso. The thing that changes when we do the barbell biceps curl is that we can alter our wrist position. And there was a point back in the golden age when bodybuilding really ruled where a lot of people were saying you should take this curl, you should have your wrist wider than shoulder width. And what that did, in theory, is it emphasized the idea of supination because as we were bringing our load up, I had to get my arm out to the side and I had to twist against that bar and creating all of that pressure in theory helped us get the elbow flexion and train our biceps that way and also emphasize the idea of supination. However, that is not the optimal way to do the barbell biceps curl. If you really wanna get the most out of this and if we wanna think about how much we can load, the way you're gonna load this the best is going to be by having your hands in line with your shoulders so that we're able to do a traditional curl. We're gonna be able to load that more and that's gonna be a lot more beneficial. You're still gonna be able to get that twist and we still have to constantly rotate our pinkies upwards as we're doing this curl. So you're still gonna get the benefit of supination, but we're not going to be constrained. We're not gonna be fighting ourselves as we curl upwards, which is exactly what happens when you have your wrists too wide in comparison to your shoulders. Once we understand that we're just gonna stay with our hands directly below our shoulders, this curl becomes very simple. All we're gonna do, we're gonna squeeze through our glutes, squeeze through our abs, and squeeze through our shoulder blades. We wanna make sure not to rock as we're curling, and then we're just gonna curl up. When you get to the top, think about squeezing for a split second. Really get a good squeeze on your biceps, and then lower down with control. Now the two key mistakes people make when they're doing this, one, it gets really, really easy to lean too far back, and to start to turn this into a swinging exhibition instead of focusing on your biceps. If you think about squeezing through your shoulder blades, squeezing your abs and squeezing your glutes the entire time though, one, you're setting your frame up for success, you're gonna keep your spine out of this, and two, that then lets you focus on getting that good bicep squeeze. 
The other key mistake that a lot of people make, especially as we get heavier, is it gets really, really convenient to let our elbows shift forward. Now, when I'm in this position, once my wrists are stacked directly below my elbows, my biceps really aren't doing that much work. My shoulders get a little bit of work because I have to roll forward, but I've taken emphasis off of my biceps. So we want to avoid that. Think about keeping your upper arms pinned to your torso as much as you can. That's gonna help us squeeze our biceps at the top of every rep. Now, remember, range of motion on this winds up being a little bit personal too. So don't feel like you have to get this up to your collarbone, especially if it's gonna draw your shoulders forward. Instead, focus on nice, tight curling form and think about squeezing at the top of the curl. So that is our barbell biceps curl. And again, this is a curl where you get to really load up and you can go heavy and it's gonna make you feel like a badass, but it is not a curl that everybody needs to do. This is a curl for advanced people who have already done plenty of work with dumbbells and with easy curl bars. If you are more at the beginning point of your arm training journey, focus on the dumbbell curls and the easy bar curls. We can keep the reps a little higher there and we can focus on getting a really, really good squeezing contraction. You wanna have a good feel for how to squeeze your biceps and you wanna have a good feel for how your arms work by the time you get to the barbell curl. So this is not a curl for everybody. Once you get to the point, however, where you're ready for the barbell biceps curl, this is the first curl you're doing in any arm workout, it is the first curl you're doing in any biceps workout, and it is a curl that you wanna leave, especially for arm day. Think about doing it for three sets of eight to 10 reps. Maybe on the last set, you'll even drop to six to eight. You can get a lot of value, even if you are going a little bit lower rep, because it's all about moving a little bit of load. So if you wanna feel like a badass when you're curling then you want to work up to the barbell biceps curl and you want to take this on it is a great way to start any biceps workout go get it